We want the Somalis to start a conversation to be either deputy president or a president in this country. Will Kenya ever have a Somali as a president or a deputy president? This is the question that is currently eliciting mixed reactions on the internet following Wajir West MP Farah Yusuf Mohammed's remarks in a recent rally. Mohammed believes that it's time for Kenyans to consider the prospect of a Somali leader, citing the community's numerical strength as a potential catalyst for their ascension to power provided there is agreement between the community and the major political parties in Kenya. Hello, my name is Chief Okuzo from Plug TV. We want the Somalis to start a conversation to be either deputy president or a president in this country. It is the high time for Somali deputy president and deputy president and we also sit on the table in the table uh, because we have the numbers we are kenyans we have been marginalized for quite long that can be even uh what do we call uh, an affirmative action as a deputy president somali also i i also know mr speaker you have an ambition, you have the quality, you have the experience, you have what it takes to be the president of this country. We, as ODM members, if, and that is if, our party leader exits the stage, we are ready to support Luya president or for and uh, Somalis to become a deputy president. Thank you for, and we hope you will be that person. But the big question is, are his dreams valid? Taking a close look at the Somali community in Kenya, we find that they are predominantly Kushitic speakers and most of them are Sunni Muslims, closely linked to the Borana community, concentrated in counties such as Garissa, Wajir, Mandera, Isiolo, and Marsabit in the northern Kenya. They emerged as the sixth largest tribe in the 2020 census with a population of 2.7 million, closely trailing the Kisi tribe with a population of also 2.7 million individuals. Now, the Kikuyu community tops the list with a population of 8.1 million people, followed by the Luyas, who have a population of 6.8 individuals, and the Kalenjin, which has a population of 6.3 individuals. Now, the Kamba and Luo communities follow suit with populations of 5 million and 4 million, respectively. Interestingly, following the census, the Somali community refused the results in court, alleging possible manipulation. They argued that the declared population of 2.7 million underestimated their true numbers. Former Wajir West MP Ahmed Kolosh challenged the statistical feasibility of a mere 400,000 increase in the community's population since 2009 when the count stood at 2.3 million. However, according to the World Bank statistics and other sources, the Somali community has a population of at least 17.5 million in Kenya as of 2022 statistics. However, they are still the sixth largest tribe in the country and the numbers or rather the top five largest tribes in Kenya don't change following the results given by the World Bank. Following the recent census, it's apparent that the Somali community has ascended to the ranks of the most influential tribes in the country. In Kenya, where voting often follows tribal lines, many politicians have articulated their desire to see a member of their own tribe assume the presidency. <laughs> Lakini unaona kabila zingine wamekuwa wajanjare. 
Upande moja wameka mother karu upande hii. Akikosa pale ndani ya zimio Mandrich anapata upande hii. Lakini nyinyi mnaambiwa mkuu na mtu mmoja na yeye akianguka nyinyi nyote mnaanguka. Mimi na waomba. And if Kenyans vote by such ideas given by our politicians this will mean for a Somali candidate to secure the presidency or a deputy presidency, they would need a substantial population surpassing even the largest ethnic group in Kenya, or they would need to form alliances with one of the top five tribes, that is Kikuyus, Kambas, Luyas, Luos, or the Kalenjins. Now, the strategy mirrors the approach taken by Waji West MP Farah Yusuf, who has appealed to his party leader Raila Odinga from one of the leading tribes for support. But how close are the Somalis to achieving the presidency? Dura Waruingi suggests that the community has already gained favor with President William Ruto, who hails from the third largest tribe in Kenya. This is evidenced by the appointment of Somali individuals to key positions within the government, indicating a potential path for a Somali candidate to ascend to power. Ndura suggests that the current Minister of Defense, Aden Duale, is being groomed by the Somali community to ascend to the second most powerful office in Kenya very soon. He argues if the Director of Criminal Investigation, NIS, and the defense officers are all headed by members of the Somali community, it presents a significant opportunity for their community to gain substantial political influence in the country. Now, the NIS is there. Yeah. The investigation is there. Yeah. Both uh, in uh, police, that is the, uh, the, the, the guy... Current, uh, the his guy, his the, name is called Gabo, right? Gabo, yeah. yes, is part of it. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, the one is called Adan. Yeah. Adan, Adan, Adan. The former trade minister is Adan somebody. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I yes. remember him. So about four, four uh, Muslim Brotherhood sits in the Defense Council. Defense Council. That council that makes decision for the country. The chances if in Kenya, mm -hmm. chances is that Duare will be the next deputy president according to their plan after after Ndinyora or maybe no, the next the next however the crucial question remains are somali people themselves prepared to rally behind one of their own for the presidential seat now, to answer this question we must examine the track record of the first somali man to vie for the presidency mwalimu dida Originally from Wajir, Mohamed Abdubadida contested the presidency in the 2013 and 2017 general elections under the Alliance of Real Change Party banner. In the 2017 election, Dida secured the fifth position according to the results published by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IEBC. Garnering 52,848 votes out of 12.3 million votes cast, amounting to a mere 0.43% of the total votes. Considering that the Somali population in Kenya was approximately 14.8 million in 2017, according to the World Bank statistics, it's notable that only a fraction of them, that is 52,848 out of the 14.8 million individuals, chose Dida as their preferred presidential candidate. Now, the remaining majority cast their votes for the non-Somali leaders. And from these statistics, do you think it's time for Kenya to endorse a Somali president or a deputy president? If you judge by these uh, statistics, do you, do you think it's time? Hmm? Leave your thoughts in our comment section. That is it for now. Thanks for watching. Let's see next time. Bye-bye.